Number five, Sequoia Su-35 Flanker E. The Sukhoi Su-35 Flanker E is by far the best operational fighter aircraft Russia has produced to date. An advanced derivative of the original Soviet-era Su-27, the new Flanker variant is high-flying, fast, and carries an enormous payload. That, combined with its advanced suite of avionics, makes the Su-35 an extremely dangerous foe to any U.S. fighter, with the exception of the stealthy Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. As an air superiority fighter, the Su-35's major advantages are its combination of high altitude capability and blistering speed, which allow the fighter to impart the maximum possible amount of launch energy to its arsenal of long-range air-to-air missiles. During an air battle, the Su-35 would launch its missiles from high supersonic speeds around Mach 1.5 at altitudes greater than 45,000 feet. It also has three-dimensional thrust vectoring, which gives it exceptional maneuverability, advanced avionics, and a powerful jamming capability. The Chinese People's Liberation Army Air Force is keen to acquire the new jet, and there have been reports that North Korea would also like to buy some number of Su-35s. As the Su-35s begin entering service in numbers, additional customers are likely to start lining up to buy the new fighter. Number four, a more class submarine. While Russia builds sophisticated nuclear-powered ballistic missile and attack submarines like the new Bory class and the Severodinsky class boats, it is a near certainty that those vessels will never be exported. Russia has only ever allowed India to lease its nuclear-powered submarines. India currently leases the Akula II class attack submarine, INS Chakra, also known by its Russian name, NERPA, K-152. Most other client states will buy advanced Russian diesel electric attack boats, the latest of which is the Amur class. Diesel electric boats, though they lack the endurance of a nuclear powered vessel, are extremely quiet and pose an extremely dangerous threat to surface warships. This is especially true in confined littoral waters close to shore. The Amur class boats, which are derived from the Russian Navy Project 677 Lada class submarines, are designed specifically for the export market. Compared to the older Kilo class design, the Amur is much quieter, largely thanks to its new single hull design, and is far better armed. It can also be fitted with an air independent propulsion system, which means it can stay underwater for a lot longer than conventional submarines that are not so equipped. The Amur class is equipped with four 533 mm torpedo tubes and 10 vertical missile launch tubes. It can travel at speeds of 20 knots and has an endurance of at least 45 days. Russia has not yet found a client for the Amur, but given that the older Kilo was very popular, it is near certainty that they will make a sale sooner rather than later. Number three, T-90 tank. The Russian T-90 main battle tank is the most advanced current Russian armored vehicle until the Armada series enters service. Though the designation is new, the tank is at its core a very heavily upgraded Soviet era T-72. The T-72 was originally intended to be produced in huge numbers as the Soviet's army lower tier tank, while the more capable T-80 was reserved for elite units. However, after the T-80's less than stellar performance during the first Chechen conflict, the Russian army chose the T-90 over upgrade version of the T-80 for future orders. While its original lies in T-72, the T-90 is an excellent tank that is far less costly than its Western counterparts like the Leopard 2 or the M1A2 Abrams. In effect, the T-90 combines the armament, sensor, and fire control systems of the latest version of the T-80 onto the T-72 chassis. It also adds a new composite armor matrix and contact five explosive reactive armor. The Russian army has almost a thousand T-90s, but the tank has proven to be popular with the Indian army, which fields perhaps the most advanced version of the vehicle with better sensors and protection among other features. In addition to India, Algeria, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, and Uganda, they have purchased the T-90. They are also reported that Vietnam and other countries have expressed interest in the vehicle Russia is currently offering an upgraded version called the T-90MS for sale. Number two, P-800 Onyx and Brahmas anti-ship missile. Originally developed by the Soviet Union, the P-800 is a supersonic anti-ship missile that was later jointly developed into the Indian-Russian Brahmas. The weapon can launch from ships, submarines, aircraft, and from land. While it is primarily designed to be used as an anti-ship weapon, the near Mach 3 capable missiles can also be used against land targets. 
It has a range of about 300 kilometers or roughly 186 miles, which means it far outranges the U.S. Navy Harpoon anti-ship missile. According to U.S. Navy sources, the Brahmas is a particularly dangerous anti-ship weapon. While they could not disclose specific details, something about the Brahmas' flight profile makes it especially problematic to encounter using existing American ship defenses. Both the original Russian version and the Indian Russian version of the weapon are available for export. Vietnam, Indonesia, and Russia operate the Bastun P shore-based version of the P-800 weapon. India operates the Brahmas from its ship, aircraft, and shore batteries. But Russia will likely install the weapon on board its new Admiral Groshkov class frigates. Meanwhile, a number of countries have expressed interest in purchasing the Brahmas, including Vietnam and Egypt. Number one, Type 53 to 65 Wake Homing Torpedo. While anti ship missiles get a lot of attention, submarine launch torpedoes are arguably a much more dangerous threat to U.S. Navy surface warships. Perhaps the most dangerous torpedoes that the Navy might encounter are high performance Russian made Wake Homing torpedoes. Wake homing torpedoes have sensors that track the churn in the water as a ship passes through and homes in on turbulence following a snake-like pattern. Wake homing torpedoes have long vexed the Navy because the weapons ignore countermeasures, like the Navy's Nixie decoy, and attack the ship directly. Further, the weapons are believed to have a very high probability of kill, which means they pose a deadly threat. The only real counter to the wake homing torpedo problem is to develop an anti-torpedo torpedo, ATT. The Navy has deployed a prototype on board the carrier USS George H.W. Bush, but it's not clear how effective the new ATTs are. Russia has exported wake homing torpedoes. China is known to have bought some, but it is not clear how many other countries have purchased such weapons. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know by clicking on the like button and do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch up with my next video.